a little bit and separate people so that you're getting the maximum amount of each of your positions during your practice time. And so with that, we'll, we'll form what we call our handoff lines. And I'm sure most people have done something similar to this where we'll have two groups of, of running backs and uh, the two groups will be about five to ten yards apart. One group will start with the ball. Uh, we only need one ball here and we'll walk their way towards the other side. The other side will be in the handoff position. We'll make the handoff. We'll secure it, roll over, and then we become the quarterback ourselves as we hand back to the line that we just got the ball from. The key with this drill we find is to make it a half speed, make it a quarter speed drill, and have plenty of space in between the lines. Don't let them just sprint at each other. You can almost see as this drill goes on, it starts getting a little bit too fast. We really like to slow it down. When oftentimes when we first start this, we have about 15 yards in between. So we have a handoff zone, a free zone, and then a handoff zone each five yards. And it gets a lot of reps, obviously, very, very quickly. The agility bags is something that we'll use for either one of our, our particular groups. And, and we just are always amazed at how many kids initially uh, just simply can't make their way over the, uh, over the bags and picking their knees up, how many what we call feet draggers we have. And so, you know, obviously it's not rocket science. The first one we're doing, we'll just simply have them running through the bags. And, and again, we emphasize this along with a couple of the other drills that we've talked about. I think, again, sometimes we overcomplicate things and we just forget that so many of the kids that we have coming in initially uh, are so clumsy and so uncoordinated that we have to do some of these things, even though it seems maybe like two step big steps back. In the end, I think you get a little bit out of it in, uh, rather than trying to set up too complicated of drills. And so what we're looking for here, again, just simple run through. The key part, though, is make sure that they're carrying a ball. Carry the ball on over the top. It changes your running motion by carrying something. And so this is a nice opening drill to, to be able to teach that concept. We then do a nice front to back type of drill. And what we're looking for here is obviously going to sprint to the front of the bag and then backpedal our way back and then sprint to the front. We just call it front to back. And what we're looking for here is great body balance. We want to have decent shoulder lean, um, but at the same time, you know, you're always going to have to cut. You're always going to have to be making moves. And I think there's a very fine line between shoulder leaning and leaning too far and you're constantly falling down or going down too easy because you have too much body lean. The great kids can do it naturally, can have tremendous body lean and pop themselves back up. Other kids have trouble with it. So what we're looking to do here is to teach a little bit of body balance and on the back pedal as well that you're not backpedaling uh, with, with your shoulders up too high, causing yourself to fall over as well. So as you'll see on the tape here, or the DVD I should say, players will start facing the sideline make their way forward, keeping their hips down, keeping good bends in their elbows and everything along those lines, and making their way through the bags very, very quickly. And again, we always like to have them carrying balls as they're going through uh, to, to get that somewhat unnatural motion of running while carrying something uh, to just be a second habit with them. The next drill that we'll move into then is, is a little bit... Uh, if you would, higher level or, or running back in particular specific drill. Let's do a little what we call stutter step drill. And what we're going to do here as they come through the agility bags is we're going to have them chop their feet in between each bag at least two times. And, and what we really think is a big key oftentimes is you're coming up onto a defender that you want to cut. Uh, it's very... Uh, uh, some kids can do it, most cannot. To just simply be able to plant in one step and make your cut is, is not as, as common as what I think most people would think. But the ability to, to chop your feet quickly and then push off and make your explosion, I think most kids can do that. And so what we're getting them in the habit of doing here is the ability to, to chop those feet initially right before you make your burst to, to cut one way or the other. Because um, again, oftentimes it comes down to that last split second before you make cut. Um, sometimes I think if you're striding too much, you make that one step cut and that's not always good. So you see them go through, they're gonna make that quick chop step uh, as they're going through, getting their feet used to making those quick stutter steps just prior to making a cut. Next one we do here is a little quick step, just a little coordination here. Um, a lot of our running backs, of course, and, and yours as well, at some point you're going to have to do some sort of little quick step, quick hop uh, to get out of the way of, of someone and so on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stagger the bags here. You'll see one will go north-south, one east-west, then north-south-east-west. We're going to step up on over the bags. And this is a great one, I think, for teaching correct footwork. 
In other words, if you're stepping to the left, you need to step with your left foot first, uh, not your right foot, and cross yourself over and get in, get yourself into a very unsmooth and ultimately slower uh, situation. As you watch the players go through here, watch which ones step with the correct feet, and you'll see a couple that will not step with the correct feet, and watch how much slower it is for them to get through the bags. Again, you want to step over, and in this case, they want to step as they're coming towards us. They want to step with their left foot, and you'll see that second individual there try to cross over with his right foot first, and you can see how much slower he was getting through the bags. And so what we're trying to teach here is correct and proper stepping, which will ultimately make you that you know half a second, quarter second faster than what other people may be. And I think you know that quarter second, obviously, in football is an awful lot. And so again, uh, a real simple drill, kind of a fun one. The kids will get much better, and again, carrying the ball the entire time. What we don't want to do in this drill, but we will do this here uh, again here in just a second, unless you're, this is what you want to do, is we don't want them hopping through, but this is another variation to the drill. We'll go through it, and we'll hop our way through the drill. And again, it's just a nice little thing to teach that quick little hop step that you're going to have to need uh, in part of your running here and there. And hopefully doing these things enough times that a lot of these things will just come, uh, come very naturally when they do it in the game. Our next one is what we call our quick cuts. And, and what the point of this drill is very simply is this. Is, is we want to teach the ability to read our blocker. And this is a, what appears to be a very simple drill, but I think it's a very, very critical one that you do something or something along these lines. What we're going to do here, because again, oftentimes we have just running backs during this time period, is going to have one of the running backs or a coach for that matter hold some sort of practice pad. It can be a stand-up dummy. In this case, we just use an agile pad, so we don't always have the best pads in the world. Running back about 10 yards away will sprint directly at the coach or the player who's holding the bag. At the last minute, the coach or the running back will take the pad and shuffle it to one side of their body or the other. And what we say is that pad uh, represents your blocker in front of you. And you always want to cut to the same side as your blocker. Now the reality is in the game is you don't often know until that very last split second which side that blocker's head's going to go on. And so we try to wane as long as we can with that pad, make them make their cut at the very last moment. The next thing that we teach during this drill, I want to emphasize during this drill, is that get as close to the bag as you can. And when you make your cut, make your cut in one to two steps at max, and then get the thing going back north and south as quickly as possible. Now, if you need to continue on an angle off your cut, do so. But if you can get around, that player uh, with one or two steps and then get back going north and south and get past them, do it. You will get yourself into the end zone a heck of a lot quicker. The next thing that we do is then we teach a lot of what we call impact type of drills with our running backs. And what we're talking about here is uh, different types of drills to teach, different things to do when you actually get hit uh, while running the ball. Uh, the first one we call just hit and lift. And what we're trying to do here is, is emphasize finishing your run uh, along with hopefully breaking tackles as well. When we get tackled in a game, and obviously it's going to happen darn near every play, we want to make sure that we deliver some sort of blow to that defender so that we finish our run and gain that extra yard to two yards with our forward momentum and that we're not stopping, slowing down, or trying to avoid contact in any way, shape, or form. So what we'll do again, line them up about 10 yards apart. Defender will hold a bag. I think that's important. It keeps people healthier. And we're going to again dip those shoulders at the last moment and deliver a blow with our forearm, with our shoulder, uh, and, and finish our runs off. And this is a good look at it right here. A little running back, about 140-pound running back, finishes the run uh, rather than just simply walking out of bounds. The next one that we do and teach is our spin drill. And, and what we're looking to do here is as a defender hits you, use their momentum to spin yourself upfield and continue uh, on your way towards the end zone. And I think a lot of times we think of this drill just being a drill that we do uh, out in the open field with one person left to go. Uh, but you'll see our kids oftentimes right in the, in the pile of people as they are getting impacted, just naturally spinning and continuing their way upfield. And it makes it difficult for defenders to, to obviously tackle you if, if you do it correctly. Uh, uh, key points here is on the spin that we're looking for. Make sure that that ball is secure. Uh, as you spin, that ball cannot be flying. It's got to be very, very close and tight to your body. 
uh, what's going to happen from time to time with any of these things is that you do spin and you get impacted by someone else as you're coming out of your spin. Make sure that ball is very tight to the body so that if you do get hit as you're spinning or, or just at the end of your spin, that that thing is not turned over. Um, but we find that we gain an awful lot of extra yardage by working on the, the spin type of situation here. And and kids, I think uh, even some of your non-physical kids like this one because they don't have to particularly be the one that's doing a tremendous amount of uh, physicality in this particular drill. And again, you'll see here on the tape, this is, is not a, a glamorous run by any stretch, um, but it's a real tough hard nose run on an off tackle play to the right side here. Uh, you'll see our running back gaining the ball here. And then just it within the thing there, a little spin right at the end, picks himself up about another two, three, four yards there at the end of the run. The next one that we teach again is is the stiff arm well uh, as well. And what we're looking to do with the stiff arm is ideally hitting the top of the helmet of the defender, but we know that often doesn't happen. And so we we like to teach you know hitting the top front of the helmet with our stiff arm as we use our free arm to push away from them. Um, but we also teach then hitting into uh, the chest as well into the numbers and trying to gain a little bit of separation there. Um, our running backs are oftentimes very very short compared to many of the defenders they're playing. So the idea of going up and, and stiff arming them some of them would have a difficult time just reaching the helmet in the first place so we do teach to hit the body as well and once again we'll have a defender with a pad uh, coming on in making sure the ball is secure and then punching hard through the chest to try to gain a little bit of separation there um, but all the while I think one of the key points again is making sure that ball is secure but getting these kids in a habit of doing something a little bit different rather than just holding on to the ball taking your shot and, and being tackled for whatever gain you happen to get can you pick up that extra two or three yards by having a couple different things that you can do um, at the the point of attack to uh, to try to gain yourself again a little bit of an advantage somehow, some way. And again, just same game film here. You'll see you see the the runoff tackle to the the right side here again, and uh, you see a couple little you know little uh, two little minor stiff arms there to gain a little bit of yardage. Again, stuff right in the middle of the play as well. One of the next drills that we'll do then is what we call our cut and change the ball drill. And what we're looking for here is two things. And we try to kind of combine different concepts into one drill. Uh, what we're going to do, of course, is work on our ability to cut um, by setting some cones up about anywhere from three to five yards apart, um, going up the field about three to five yards, and then, of course, side to side about three to five yards as well. So you start at one cone, sprint your way to the other chop your steps and it you hit the cone then you'll switch the ball with an essence that you always want to keep your ball away from contact um, we'll switch the ball over at the cone cut ourselves up to the next cone switch the ball make our quick cut um, but again over exaggerating the chopping of the feet uh, in this particular drill uh, as we make our way again from the top there to the bottom a little quick quick shuffle quick cho uh, chops and then switch the ball over, make our way up to our next one. So a very simple drill, but again, one that I think is critical that you do, that you emphasize how to change the ball. And what we're looking for as, as we change the ball is for them to take the ball from, say, their right hand, shuffle it up to their numbers of their jersey, and then make the exchange up by the chest area, not just swinging the ball randomly from one arm to the other. Keep it tight to the body, up to the top, two hands, and then shuffle it over to the other hand, if you will. Uh, one other drill that we do here then is, is what we call a three-legged drill. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it, um, but I think it's important that you, you're able to teach your running backs um, the, the naturalness of, of dropping their off hand down when they are slightly off balance. Uh, what we're looking to do here is, is you're, in, you're in the middle of the field and you got knocked off slightly to be able to drop that other hand down and bounce yourself back up. Uh, and then continue on your way. And I think it's a key little point here. You can gain an extra couple yards, even if you can't pop yourself completely up. Uh, you just get yourself and then have been able to be comfortable with dropping a hand down to pick up that extra yard or two or, or maybe more. And this is a real simple way that we've, we've done it over the years. I mean, nothing, again, very complicated here. Get a handful of lines. Using your, your yard markers ahead of you, you know, drop the hand down on the one yard marker, do a quick little spin, change the ball over then 
and then make your way back up the field uh, for the remaining five yards. And and what we find here again is can you find a couple different ways to create and, and uh, create situations that you can give your kids an opportunity to do a couple different concepts. Again, not only do we have the three-legged drill here, we're also working on an exchange as well. We'll be watching both those two areas. Can we drop the hand down and come around smoothly? Then can we bring the ball up to the chest? double secure and then make the exchange. By double secure I'm talking about having both hands on the ball, both tips are covered, and then we make the exchange over to um, the other hand. Now as far as running back drills go, again like we said a lot of these drills are carryover drills um, and, and we use for multiple positions. To teach our blocking for our running back we're going to go in this progression. We're going to work our six point punch which you've seen earlier. We're going to work our mirror drills which you've seen earlier as well to teach uh, your feet and spacing and so on. We'll even do a little bit of mirror lock on with them for pass protection as well. And then we'll do what we call a, uh, we call it our drive out drill. And we do a couple different variations of this. One of the big problems that we find with our running backs is that uh, what it's because of whatever level they've been taught the game that running backs just simply run the ball. We don't often find that they're great blockers. And so one of the things that we have to do is teach uh, teach the concepts of blocking and also get them over the fear of blocking. One of the things that we find that we have a lot of trouble with is, is people putting their face mask into the block. We are not advocating that you hit with the top of your helmet at all. But the reality is, is when you block, that face mask is going to come into contact with the other team uh, player. So what we do is we do this little face mask. We stick the face mask right into the pad and without their hands being used we push the defender of course is going to give on this we're not locked in trying to make any great stand but we want them to get used to the fact that 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 helmet is going to be part of the block whether you like it or not get the face mask up for safety sake and as a coach I would feel better about about doing one of these drills just from a safety standpoint if you're going to have to hit with your head or if it's going to happen just make sure that head is always up we then add in the punch part here we're going to have to start with the face locked in and then we're going to bring the hands in get the punch and bring that on up through because oftentimes that face mask almost sometimes hits first and if you've got a player that is running and has their head way behind the rest of their body you're not going to get much of an impact uh, hopefully you can time it so that those those hands hit just slightly before the face mask but it's going to be very very quickly uh, when and if you do block the thing correctly. So we go ahead and work these drills in there as well. We like to put them on lines. It gets, uh, gets them in the habit of putting their feet apart. We'll throw some boards in there as well. This is a little bit of uh, footage from our practice. Again, we always make sure we got a shield in there to make sure that it's safe and so on. Got our first our punch drill there as we're working on up the field, going about four to five yards here flipping the pads around and then you'll see us do our little face mask drill there as well uh, but again one more time with the punch and we can get a lot of very quick repetitions here one of the problems I'm sure you have at times with your your uh, your your teams if you have good numbers oftentimes you've got everyone in the world thinking they can be a running back so you got to find ways that you can do drills quickly out of repetitions and so on and then of course we drop them into their stance and they do the same types of things what you want to watch here is our fullback and then our, our right side halfback on the kick out block there both of them bodies are perfectly square the punch the face mask and so on all go right up through off tackle near side here little halfback on the other side takes the corner to, to the ground there but you have to be willing to sell out and you've got to be willing uh, to put your entire body into the block now as far as teaching plays one this be the last thing we'll talk about on this tape one of the things that we think has really helped us with teaching plays and timing because to me timing is everything uh, besides for teaching the correct steps and so on I think teaching aim points is critical for making your plays appear to be even quicker than what they maybe are we always set down cones when we're teaching our plays we don't let our uh, running backs just randomly run through plays and so on so whether it's an off tackle whether it's our inside fullback and our triple and so on we have cones down for aim points and we have them at the exact points we get tape measures out on the field we make markings on the field so we know where to set the cones to speed things up for our practice but we have our running backs hit the exact aim points where we want them this is working on our trip this is actually part of our practice video that we also uh, sell uh, showing how we teach part of our triple option package but you see we got aim, uh, aim points the aim point for our fullback happens to be six feet from the ball those cones if you're to measure them will be exactly six feet from the football or from where the center is snapping them 
and it's it's a great thing to do if you if you run your program from the bottom up that all of our levels will be hitting the exact same aim points and they get better and better as the years go on and more efficient this also gives us a great advantage because if we have to bring up a sophomore quarterback to play at our varsity level the aim points not the players but the aim points are the same for all the handoffs and so on and we've had to do that over the years it just makes the timing on everything much much better and this same play here you're going to see now uh, to the left side here, that's our fullback on the triple. The quarterback keeps it, comes around the outside. Again, these kids are not tremendously fast players by any stretch, but I think the play looks like it hits fairly quick. And the reason, again, is, is we have our steps and, and so on all timed up, I think, pretty well. This concludes uh, the running back and wide receiver drill tape, and I, and I certainly hope that uh, throughout the tape uh, you, got, you got some different ideas for some different drills, a couple pro blocking progressions and so on in there as well, and I hope you feel like you got your money's worth. One of the things that I would again emphasize, some things may seem simplistic, but I think you have to do them. Uh, I think at times we take for granted these days just how much uh, kids actually know about the game and how much they're uh, doing in their backyards and so on to try to get themselves better. Uh, I found these drills through, you know, going through pro game or uh, pro practice, excuse me, and college practices and so on. They're doing the same things at uh, their practices and so on. So I think you can never overestimate uh, simple things and then at the same time be able to make more advanced drills that I hope you uh, found in this tape as well. And just find a way to do these things on a constant basis and get as many repetitions as you possibly can from, from your kids in practice. Again, I hope you've enjoyed the DVD, and if you have, again, please feel free to check out my website for the other uh, packages I have available. I have an offense and a defense line drill DVD as well. Uh, I go over our multiple 50 DVD uh, and our defense, that particular one, how, what things we do in our special teams uh, through our special teams DVD. And we also have our practice planning uh, DVD. And what this is, is this focuses in on what we call our heavy practice days, where we, uh, for us, it's our Tuesday and Wednesday practice days where we have um, our really our bulk of our hitting and so on and it takes you step by step minute, minute through minute how we do that and how we teach offense and defense every night during our practices. I also have a practice planning packet and, and the slight difference there although there's a considerable amount of more information and different information is I take you through our entire week what we do uh, from Saturday through game night on Friday and all the little things that uh, myself and our staff uh, do to teach those things. They're all $15 and the website there again uh, makes it real simple to order. So again thank you once again for uh, purchasing this DVD. If you have any questions about any of the drills here or any of the other products I offer, just football in general, uh, never have, hesitate to get a hold of me uh, at my email, Mike underscore 27 underscore 1. And if you don't hear back from me in a couple days for whatever reason, shoot me another one every now and then an email gets dropped and so on. Um, but I'll be glad to get back to you. I love talking about the game of football and hopefully this, uh, this tape will help uh, you and your program uh, be a little more successful and uh, just give you some new ideas for the fall. Thank you again.